I thought I'd do a little something on uh, open E slide tuning, like from the beginning and going through to something a bit more advanced. And I know uh, um, a lot of people are doing slide guitar lessons and so forth. And it kind of put me off a little bit, but anyway, as long as someone, one person or half a person gets something out of this, it's probably, you know, it's worth doing. First of all, you're going to need a guitar. Uh, I use this thing for my slide. It's all beaten up. The frets are all worn down and it needs a refret, but that makes it ideal for a slide because you can, you got less bumpiness when you're sliding over the strings. Um, so this is open E. Let's tune up for that. So you've got an E, B, E, G sharp, B, E. Alright, I'll do that real slow. That means it's an open E chord, and you play it open like that. Navigate yourself around off your sixth string, so like E, G, A. So then if you want to play major chords on those, just bar across. D purple. So, next thing you want to do is pick a slide. This is so uh, subjective. You get all sorts. Some people like brass, glass, really little ones like this. And I tend to use these. And these are Dunlop ones. I've had like expensive slides in the past and I break them. These things you can pick up off the shelf for like seven pounds, seven, eight pounds, you know. Um, so I have a bunch of these and I leave them everywhere. Like every guitar case all around the house. This one's even though it's still a little too big for me. Uh, I like to have a thick wall. They call this bit the wall. But you don't want it, you kind of wear it halfway up your finger like that. So you can bend it. Tight as comfortable, I would say. And the other thing is length. Uh, I, I use pretty short ones. I find that I use a longer slide. This is a, the longer version of that. See? It's just slower and more unwieldy. It's in the way, you know? I kind of measure it so that it's not far off the width of the fret. Um, a lot of people like these, these, like, these old medicine bottles that you can get. That famously, Dwayne Allman used to use. So uh, they're good. I, I started off playing these. My issue with them is when you're gigging and playing, it doesn't take long for this thing to get into a big sludge pit. Uh, you're sweating. I find if you have an open-ended slide, it doesn't do the same thing. It's... And it doesn't flap about as much. The next thing to think about is which finger you're going to wear it on. And this is another thing that will take quite a bit of experimentation. Again, there is no rules and it's going to be another compromise, depending on quite what you want out of your plan. So a, a very common place to place your slide is on the little finger. And for that, you'd probably want a, a bit smaller slide to see that it's quite... My little finger isn't very strong. So the compromise there is a little less strength, but you gain the use of all of these three fingers, so you can pretty much just... You know, um, use those as normal. Um, I guess in standard tuning it would be really handy because you can do all your normal chords. Some people use this. This is a, probably the strongest finger, you know. Probably your strongest finger, but my issue with this is uh, limited chordal stuff. There's less dampening in front, which I'll explain a bit more in a bit. The other thing is, it, it makes you want to twist your hand a bit. So that puts pressure on the back, back here. Yeah, I'm finding I'm wanting to pull, pull around that. For me, and this is just how it ended up for me, and I wear it on this finger. Now that allows me to do, so to do my little fretting of the star here. Um, the slide doesn't feel too much in the way. I can do my dampening with these two fingers. I can fret behind the slide. So a lot of people like to do that. You know, uh, you'll hear people do that. 
See what I'm doing there? I'm just... I'm fretting behind the slide here. You can do that and you can pull off things like uh, sliding around in major seven chords for, you know. So basically what happens is you, you put the slide there and then you press down behind. It's also the, the way you do minor chords. Also with this, having it on this finger, I find the, my little finger helps stabilize it quite a bit. See how it sits, just kind of sits up there when I need to be solid. Uh, I find that I'm looking over that finger a lot. So it helps me line up just to, for my intonation. My eyes go down my big old nose, straight down that thing. So, so, my, so everything's in a line. So this will be something you, you'll experiment with, try it out, pretty much find what's most comfortable. And you, you may, may start off on that finger and, like, -uh, and end up on another finger. Um, okay, so the, the next thing to look at is this setup of the guitar. I mean, a lot of people will tell you, oh, you've got to jack the action right up. Again, it's a compromise. It's between your fretting and your sliding, how easy you want and how much fretting you can do with your sliding. Personally, this is what I do, I and mean, it might give you some things to think about. I tend to set up my action off the third and the fourth string here, get that height right, and then adjust the rest to that. The reason being is guitars generally a slope like that, so this will be the lowest point and the, and the place you're most likely to ground out. On fenders where, and guitars where you can adjust the saddles, I work on those and, and then bring those up flat. In that you don't have to follow the contour of the neck, the flatter the better really. As a further point, maybe bring your action down to the lowest point really and, and really work on how light you play your slope. There's a thing with the temptation to play the slide really hard, especially if you're in a band and everything's really loud and you're trying to compete with volume. It's, it's far better to have the amp really loud and, and play quieter with your fingers. What happens is, is with the less you pick, the sound swells rather than picking really hard. It's just bleh. So you, it just, you just get a much better sound if you pick like this. has room to breathe almost. You know? Yeah, that's me picking up. Uh, it takes a little bit of practice and that's all a feel thing. It's another reason why it's really good to practice with an amp if you're gonna play this electric style slide guitar. Playing without an amp, and I'm really guilty of this and I've hurt my fingers because I have like bad pain to my knuckles now. from playing too hard and practicing without an amp because you play naturally will play to whatever volume you need in the room without an amp so you're going to play too hard okay so now you've chosen a slide you've chosen which finger you're going to start off with um let's make some noises so uh to get the pressure right on slide imagine this is there's dust on this thing so just really gently brush off the dust you know Really gently, and it's on the front seat. So you, you're not pressing down, you're just brushing off the dust. Then get your slide and do the same thing. That much pressure. And that's as hard as you press. You don't press any harder than that. So the, the secret is to, is to just glide over the strings. It might feel a little uncomfortable to start with. The, my thumb is on the back of the neck here. So the next thing to do is 
think about what we said earlier, where, how you navigate. So this is, a, let's say we're navigating off this sixth string. That's an E, and it goes up from there. F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, and so on, all the way up to 12th fret, which is where your E repeats and everything repeats up that way. Now to play a chord in tune, let's go play an A, a major chord. So with your finger, you bar across the fifth fret here. Let's get an A major. Now to do the same thing with your slide, you navigate between the two. So basically, say that's your A major, you navigate over this fret wire. So the slide sits right over that. And swap around with your finger so it helps you intonate a little bit. So you can hear it's in tune, I'm probably not, because I'm... And you can give it a wobble. So that's A major. Now the other thing which is, a, is good to get used to doing straight off the bat, and it might feel, again, a little uncomfortable, is take, if you're using this finger, take these two fingers and just rest them on the slide in front here. They're not pressing down, they're just resting. And it, this like helps any, what they call extraneous, extraneous notes from ringing out, especially when you're doing uh, single notes. And if I don't hear all those other notes ringing out. It's a good thing to get in the habit of now. Just leave those resting on there and just glide around. Perhaps our A, sliding into our A chord. If you'll notice, I'm not using a plectrum. Again, uh, another choice to make, another thing to experiment with. I find it sounds so much better with fingers than plectrum. And, and similarly to resting your fingers here to stop extraneous notes, on this hand too, we do dampening where your fingers are dampening the notes that you aren't playing at that point. It just helps with lead line. <laughs> and you'll see the slide is touching other strings at the same time. So it kind of removes that messiness. And there are times when you want to be messy. No dampening, but it's a good habit to get into anyway with the two fingers and playing with your fingers in this hand. You just get better results. I will say though, there are lots of people who use a plectrum and slide that sound great. So uh, you'll figure out which way you want to go with that. Okay, so uh, we've got our A chord here. We've got our fingers dampening nicely behind there with a plectrum or a thumb. I'm gonna do a downstroke with my thumb here. Try, try sliding it down to the G. So if you remember, G will be your third fret up. Give it a little vibrato. Getting the feel around these chords will probably take a little while just to get comfortable. It, sh it shouldn't hurt anywhere. It shouldn't, you shouldn't feel any tightness. Everything's really relaxed. Uh, just, you know, just gliding around. You could maybe try going up to the 12th. Okay, so the next thing is to put this into practice in a kind of a musical situation. So uh, a common thing you would use this is, is busking along with people playing blues or uh, any sort of chords really, you just sort of sliding behind. So uh, this is a, a, a blues uh, in E, I think it's in E. Um, so just as an example of how you would use what we've done already to do that. So the chords we're gonna use are E to A, back to 
to E, down to B, back to E, down to A, back to E, to B, to E. A very basic sort of bluesy thing. Um, and the other thing you can do is mess around with the octave so you can go. And so forth. So here we are. I've, there's a little backing track. I'll put a link to you. What well, you can download that somehow, probably in the description at the bottom down there. Um, and I'll just play along with it on here, and you can kind of see what happens. That's basically how uh, you slide around using major chords. The sort of next thing to do, I guess, is to show minor chords a little bit. I do minor chords, so you take a major chord. So the same major. So to make from a major chord to a minor chord, you flatten the third, and in open E tuning, your third sits on your G string. So what you have to do is flatten that by a semitone down to there. You can't do that with a slide too easy. You can try slanting. It kind of works, isn't it? Quite difficult to do. The other thing you can do is take your finger here and lower the string behind the, the slide to, to lower that string. So. playing a G to an A minor there. That's essentially how you do it. Um, so it takes a little practice to get it to sound in tune. So you, you kind of want to look down here, make sure that is over the fret wire. You've got enough action, you're not pressing down too high because get any of that stuff. So really lightly pressing. So there's another way that I'll do minor chords and that doesn't involve fretting at all. And so let's say let's take a let's take A major okay to um, B minor with the slide the previous message place that these notes occur is here. So you go. So that's a normal one. So if you if you limit just to playing those two notes. You can get away with playing it there. That's another way. Uh, but for now, if I were you, I would just think about this.
So that's minor chords. Um, not too bad, a little practice. Just getting that, you know. Just getting, trying to get that intonation to sound right. That'll get you through a lot of stuff. Um, hope this has been useful. Uh, I'll probably do another one soon, which will be getting some lead playing in. There's these, the box shapes, so. Some of that stuff. So uh, see, see you in good stead for uh, pretty much any eventuality. All right, take care.